Hello everybody, how's it going? I am Wack Crendor and welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Crendor. We're on episode 31. 31 of these things. This is crazy. Um, and I'd like to welcome back Nixium. Hey, I'm back. Nixium has turned into a flute. <laughs> a drone uh, flute. <laughs> a drone flute at that. A cedar drone flute, that's right. <laughs> You've made a few videos using that flute. I uh, yeah, I made a few. Lord of the Rings challenge. I even made a video called Cedar Drone Flute in the Woods. Oh wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this uh water bottle real fast. Drink in the well, water bottle. Yes. Physically. While you prepare your your Physically. first question or whatever. Alright. Well I was uh I was trying to find out what episode you were on first, and I think, according to this, you're on episode six. Really? So it's we're, episode we're six. We're on 31 right now? And we're on 31. Hold on, when was this filmed? This was filmed June 23rd, 2015, so a little over two years ago. Wow. That was a that's long time a, ago. That's a long time ago. I think we've both, we've both grown a lot since then. Yes, I, I actually, fun fact for the audience, um, back when back when uh, I was on the first Fishing with Crendor episode, I kind of, I, I never really liked that Fishing with Crendor episode uh, because I felt like I was so awkward and shy in it, which I mm. was. But like, since then, I feel, I don't know, like you said, grown a lot. Um, so uh, I kind of wanted to, Maybe do like uh, another episode. So I was just like, "Hey, Crandor, you want to like maybe do another episode or something sometime?" Where I'm not like so embarrassingly <laughs> like pathetic throughout the entire thing. He was like, "Yeah, <laughs> okay." <laughs> that is what I so, said. Yeah, okay. So right. here I am. I'm back. I'm back. Hey, uh, you would have actually. Two years, though. It has been a good two years. You've actually grown a lot since then as well. well I feel like I, you I, should uh, you should tell people what you do in case they're like, I'm here and I still don't know who this guy. <laughs> well, I, I've grown a lot, but I've also shrunk a lot because since the last time I spoke to you, um, I've probably dropped probably like 70 pounds. Oh, wow. So, uh, but for those that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Nixium. And you might know me from my YouTube channel, <gasps> Nixium. And <laughs> if you don't know me from there, you might know me from Planet Dolan or Super Planet Dolan as <gasps> Nixium. And if you don't know me from there, then I'm also a Twitch streamer named Nixium. And <laughs> I pretty much what I do is I'm a voice actor on Super Planet Dolan, and I make like WoW videos on my YouTube channel, and I stream myself playing games on Twitch, and known WoW Crendor for a good little while. Good yeah, little while. Over two years. <laughs> over two years. I don't, I don't exactly know how I met you. I don't, I don't even remember. Either, actually, I don't, that's the thing not. with a lot of people is I always forget how I originally met them. Oh, I remember how. Hmm. I contacted you to do a voice for me. It was the video, How to Make Easy Gold in WoW. Oh yeah. And it was a WoW machinima and you had to play a gnome in it. I That's remember how that. How and then to, you were like, okay. How to make easy gold in WoW. Yeah. Let's see here, how old's that? Might have to add next at the end. Go. <laughs> September 29th, 2014. <laughs> It's been a while. So um, about three years. Almost three years. Three years. It's been yeah. a long time, man. It has been a long time. Um, yep. So, yeah. Uh, damn, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? This is my life story. <laughs> Just forgetting <laughs> what I was going to say. Um, uh, we, you're, he already told me his life story before the uh, before the recording began. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they yeah, were talking about a bunch of deep stuff. It was, we were actually. We've been talking for like 40 minutes prior to this. So. It was we were like talking the about warm up. It's like batting practice. <laughs> we were talking about astronomy and like mathematics. Mm. We even like went into like earthquakes and stuff. Like it was, it was pretty legit. Quantum theories. But, you know, boring yeah. stuff like that. You guys don't yeah. care. So we, we kept that out of the episode. Yeah. You know, it's just. Um, I was like, oh, God, kidding. I almost forgot what I was going to say again. Uh, <laughs> you would have been the first repeat guest if it wasn't for like two days ago. 
when uh, oh, really? I fished with Sips, who I'd fished with exactly two years ago. Like, it was the August 8th or whatever, uh, so it was two years ago. So you're technically the second repeat now. Cool. But, I mean, That's all right. I'm, I'm fine with it. You start you start wanting to have repeat guests because it's like, dude, like run I said, like, <laughs> well, yeah, you run out of people, but it's like, I want to catch up again, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like, there's so many people, like, like so much changes in two years. It's crazy. Who Who is somebody that you've always, like, if you could get anybody in the world, anybody on Fishing mm. with Crendor, a celebrity, you know, my mom, like anyone, <laughs> like, who, who would you get on Fishing with Crendor? Oh, I know who would be right away. Carl Wait. Pilkington. Oh, okay. I was going to say Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. But oh, okay. no. Carl Pilkington close. of Idiot Abroad. Um, I don't, I don't so, do you know who Ricky Gervais is? No. All right. Well, <laughs> we're we're uh, we're striking out. Okay. Uh, he's just this dude who's just this really normal dude. Worked at like a radio station for Ricky Gervais, who's a comedian, and okay. they were just like, Carl is just this. He's such a normal guy. Doesn't care. And they made him go all over the world. And normally people are like, Wow, I love traveling. I love experiencing stuff. And he's just like. He hates traveling. He's like, I don't get it. Like, we're just people. We're just gonna die. Like, whatever. Might as well just do whatever we want. <laughs> and he's like, he goes to China and he's on the wall and he's just like, it's hot. I'm bored. And he's <laughs> like, it's the all right <laughs> wall of China. It's not really that great. <laughs> like that type right. of thing. So like, I just, I relate to him on a lot of levels because I'm like, I hate. I just, I don't really get traveling that much either. Like, I don't enjoy what? it. Like, I, I enjoy it when I'm there. I hate the process of getting there. I, I'm i a home person. Like, I'm I'm a literal Bilbo Baggins. I enjoy being oh. at home. I enjoy entertaining people. I enjoy just the, the simple things. Oh, the exact <laughs> opposite, man. Like, dude, I, I mean, mm, dude, just going to an airport, just thinking about going to an airport, I mean, <sighs> yeah. Like, oh my god, dude! I love traveling. I love flying in the airplanes and going on long car rides, like eleven-hour car rides and stuff. Man, I love it. And then, and then, honestly, when I get to the place that I'm going, it's always so boring. <laughs> you enjoy. It's like, the... dude, I'm gonna go to the mountains. And then you get to the mountains, and you're like, I'm bored. I want, to, <laughs> I want to go somewhere and do something. I was up in the mountains just a few months ago, actually. I might oh, really? go back again. Mm -hmm. Where at? Rental. Like what mountains? Well, for any uh, friends that might live near North Carolina, uh, I was up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and I was up near uh, Franklin, North Carolina, hmm. and I rented a log cabin up there. I was with uh, two other people, uh, two people from my stream, actually, that I got to know like through private messages and stuff, this dude mm -hmm. and his wife. And we were, uh, we were up there for a couple of days, and they were here in America for the first time for a week and a half, and I showed them a good time, and took them all around the state and showed them a bunch of waterfalls, lots of natural areas, and they loved it. And honestly, I mean, I really want to go on a vacation again because you know, it's been a it's been a little while mm -hmm. uh, since they left. And I'm tempted to go back uh, up to those mountains. And, and the guy that we stayed with, I don't remember his name. I think it was Mike. And we essentially, I did not realize this when we bought the place or when I rented it. Um, essentially, he lived on the top floor, and we stayed on the bottom floor. Which, when we got there, I did not like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought we were going to get, like, our own place. Yeah. You know? But uh, eventually, we met him. And uh, we met him the second day we were there. And incredibly nice guy. And, you know, he just was going to keep to himself, not do anything. But one day, one day, uh, I... I sent him a text message while he was upstairs, and I said, "Hey, uh, Mike, I'm hope I hope it was Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah. You know, I forgot your name wrong. It might have been Chris. Whatever, same thing. Mm -hmm. But I sent him a text <laughs> message, and I was like, "Hey, Mike, uh, me and my friend, uh, we want to like smoke cigars. Are you cool with us smoking cigars outside?" Um, and I asked him that because we couldn't smoke in the house, but he had a young daughter, and I didn't, you know, I don't know if he wanted her to be exposed to people smoking, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Um, you know, I live down in the Bible belt guys. I mean, come on, it's North Carolina. So, uh, <laughs> just being some considerate people, anyway. yeah, you know, just, just being considerate. And he was like, Oh, he's like, yeah, that's fine. Thomas, that's fine. That's cool. 
And uh, I sent him another text message, and I was like, okay, thanks, man. Uh, by the way, we got, you know, some extra cigars if you want to come down and, you know, smoke one with us. That guy ran down the stairs so fast. <laughs> he was like, oh, c- cigar? Like, <laughs> and we, we sat with him all night for, like, maybe, like, six hours, and we just chilled out. And he was telling us, like, that he has never once not once ever like actually sat and talked with someone that has like stayed at his house in all the years he's been renting and uh and uh and he loved us and we smoked and we you know drank a little bit of wine and stuff and uh we brought some meat up there and we shared that with him and he loved it and he told me if i ever want to come back he'll give me a huge discount because you know he thought we were all so nice so i'm tempted to go back up there yeah Maybe that's in really next- cool next month or two go up there for a week or something smoke some cigars with mike again that'd be cool well i know um obviously you do like the wow machinima stuff if you want to if you want to hear oh, yeah. about all the wow stories and all that you can just listen uh, to the old episode uh, but yeah, I, was, I was about to say oh yeah we should probably <laughs> talk about wow shouldn't we yeah but talk um, about boring stuff <laughs> i wanted to well i wanted to talk about how you've made camping videos right Oh boy, yeah, um, on camping video. Because I mean, I just made a new orc first wild. <laughs> yes, you did. I watched it. How did you enjoy it? <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. Oh, I, okay. I I can totally imagine you flying because uh, I mean I make videos too. Yeah. So I can I can totally see you just sipping your tea or your coffee, flying <laughs> around Dunmoro, going, uh, all right, I'll use this cave. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's meat outside. I guess I'll make a <laughs> rotten meat joke. Uh, there's actually yeah, a, a fun story with that. I actually streamed okay. doing that. Oh, really? Because I was kind of I was kind of bored, and I was like, I think I'm gonna do some work for wild stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stream it because I was like, everybody always is like, Crendor, how do you make videos? And I was like, well, you're about to witness it. And it's just me flying around, being like, now where's that guy that crashed in the, the mountain? And then ah. I just fly around, and chat's like, oh, it's over here. And like, no, it's up there. And then, then someone guy's like, oh, it's uh, behind Iron Forge. And I was like, well, yeah. there it is. And then just literally flying around doing that. So, I mean, That's it's cool. now documented. And, uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I've always really enjoyed survival shows. And I've always... Um, just enjoyed watching people just out in nature like whether yeah. even though like man vs wild's very set up and staged like i always love survivor man because it's even if it is staged he does it a lot better and it's yeah. a lot more realistic um and then i saw you did all your your like uh camping stuff and so i've watched your camping video probably like mm. three times oh really point. wow like i really enjoyed it and so i was curious as to like how you got into that type of thing or like if you grew up with that or uh, some more some more info about that. Um, well, just like Crendor, uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, survival shows growing up, and um, I might have mentioned this on the last fishing with Crendor. I've talked about it on Twitch before multiple times, uh, but it is a true fact. And I don't know if you knew this, Crendor, but here you go. Mm-hmm. Um, before I. Uh, started doing youtube seriously and before uh, at the time i was with a partner and i was kind of me and her it was a long distance relationship and you know we were trying to make money to make it work Mm -hmm. and uh youtube was just like a little bit of side money at the time you know Mm -hmm. 50 bucks a month 100 bucks a month um but before that happened before i met her and before i really started you know taking youtube more seriously uh my friend tate um he's a hitchhiker and he hitchhikes all around the United States. And he's currently in Colorado and he's kind of building homes for uh, the homeless over there right now. But um, I was going to go hitchhiking with him across the U.S., uh, which he's done multiple times before before that. Hmm. And uh, after that, I was actually going to I was going to make my way uh, north and I was going to sneak over the border and make my way up into Canada. And pretty much I was going to go out into the Canadian wilderness and I was going to go live out there by myself until I would die, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. And that was that was the plan. I mean, even even now, like even thinking about it, I'm like, oh, man, that would be so great. Just, like go <laughs> out there like and be out in the wild. Um, I've always been uh, 
a big fan of survival shows and just learning survival skills ever since I was very young. Um, I love the, you know, I, I can't describe it, this very poetic, beautiful feeling that you get when like a fire starts going. Um, I, I love the feeling of like, uh, I mean, hopefully I don't make anybody uncomfortable, but like I, I like the feeling of, you know, processing my own food, mm. um, you know, animals, stuff like that. It makes me feel, you know, I like using, you know, uh, animal bones and stuff to make things. I like carving. You probably saw my wood carving video too, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, I, I like carving wood. Uh, I'm a very old fashioned kind of guy. Um, and so that, that camping video, um, you know, I've been camping plenty of times and, uh, I just decided to haul a bunch of film equipment, uh, that film equipment out there and record it. Um, and I hadn't been camping for a little while, uh, when I made that video and, uh, it was really good to get out there. And, uh, especially now that I've lost so much weight, uh, that was the main reason why I wasn't camping as much as I used to. Mm. And, uh, it was good to get out there and to be, you know, processing the wood and just to be out there, you know, by yourself. Uh, in the middle of the woods at night, I find it to be very relaxing. Um, you know, lots of coyotes out in those woods. So that was, it was pretty cool. Like hearing the coyotes, you know, running around out there at night while I was sleeping in the tent. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I spent my childhood playing out in the woods and, um, yeah. So, uh, glad you enjoyed the camping video. I definitely want to do another one like that, but, I just moved into a new house uh, at the end of June. Maybe it was at the beginning of June. No, it was at the beginning of June because I, I bought this house on my birthday, June oh, 7th. Well. Bought my first house. And a uh, little tiny place, you know, up north, north of Charlotte. And a uh, little tiny home. But I'm kind of looking for a big forest near here that I can kind of go get lost in. Mm -hmm. You know, go camping in. No one's going to bother me. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta find a place like that and then I can maybe do some more camping videos and maybe I'll do some videos kind of demonstrating like, you know, edible plants, uh, how to make a fire, you know, stuff like that. That'd be kind of fun to do. I yeah. mean, I think so. It'd be fun for me anyway, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know about I'd my audience, that. but you know, <laughs> well, who cares about them, right? <laughs> as one person in the audience, I would love yeah. watching that. I would watch it probably multiple times. I mean, I'm, I'm that guy, like, I'm that weird guy that, like, will go out and, you know, fun fact, if anybody doesn't know this, uh, you can eat dandelions. Um, you know, I don't know if you knew that, but dandelions are completely edible. Yeah, they're completely edible. The the, the, the the flower, the stem, the root, they're completely edible. They're actually really good for you. And I'll, <laughs> I, I've actually, like, gone outside and I've gotten my mail before and there was a dandelion growing like near my mailbox and my neighbor was walking by walking his dog I just picked that dandelion and just ate it like right in front of him and that guy looked at me like oh my gosh like it's like I was the devil or something so, but yeah dandelions and uh, there's there's a there's a few like edible plants you could probably found, find around your house that you can eat well so. it's weird because like I know you said you grew up in that type of uh, doing that type of thing like playing in the woods running around i grew up in the city so like yeah. i think the part of me that really enjoys it is like that part deep down where like i've always been in the city but i enjoy that that aspect of concept yeah of being like free out in the woods and like watching people survive yeah um, that's it's like a primal thing almost oh definitely man definitely i uh i'm, I'm very much attracted to the idea i mean a lot of people tend to romanticize nature as being, you know, this amazing, tranquil environment. But I think mm -hmm. anybody that's ever gone camping without a tent, they will tell you that nature is not romantic and tran or tranquil. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nature is very unforgiving and very aggressive and very chaotic. And essentially, it's just everything is fighting to survive. Like yeah. Everything is fighting to kill the thing next to it and to survive and, mm -hmm. you know, reproduce or whatever. And so, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I, I like that. It's hard to describe. It's a, a very, it's hard. It's a very difficult. It's very difficult to describe. But I like that whole going out there. It's kind of you 
you against the wild. It's your your mind versus the environment around you. Your like will to survive. Your will nature's to make that fire. Arena. Yeah, nature's <laughs> arena. That's a good way to put it. So if you ever come down to North Carolina, you know, totally, I'll I'll take you camping with me. Hell yeah, we'll, Let's we'll do we'll do, we'll do uh, no tent <laughs> camping. <laughs> so it's just like gotta a, gotta build the shelter. It'll be like the, the thing with like the the naked and afraid. There's like yeah. day twenty. I just want to kill myself. <laughs> It'll be, it'll be, yeah, naked and afraid. It'll be like, it'll be, we'll call it like nude and uncomfortable, <laughs> but not I'm actually extremely, nude. extremely uncomfortable right now. He is nude. <laughs> he, he's nude. I'm not, I don't know why he's nude. Like, like, come on, Crandor. <laughs> Get with the times. No, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. No, but like, it'd be fun. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. I think that the main thing is. Like mosquitoes, yeah, mosquitoes biting you. It's mainly, it's mainly uh, the don't, bugs. Don't worry about that. I'll take. I'll, I can take care of that. You can fight the mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, if you want to avoid mosquitoes, uh, the first piece of advice: um, number one, do not shower before you go out in the woods. Uh, it's actually recommended don't shower like 24 hours before you go like out into the woods. And the reason why is because mosquitoes are attracted to sweet smells, uh, oh. like shampoo. Mm. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing, if it's really bad, you can cover yourself in mud. I'm sure you know, know that, but mm -hmm. I've never had that issue. Uh, w whenever I've gone camping, um, I, I actually was going to show this, and I, I had the footage of this uh, in that camping video that we were talking about. Um, uh, I, I recorded this footage of me finding this termite-filled log, and I was explaining, like, oh, I'm going to burn this termite-filled log because termite poop, when you burn it, it's an insect repellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't really want the video to be, like, a survival info thing. Yeah. I just wanted it to be like, oh, Nixium camping, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I scrapped that, all that footage, and I never included it. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, one of the things that I did. Because if you noticed in that camping video... Um, I uh, was right next to a small creek of stagnant water, so there actually was a lot of bugs. But as oh, soon yeah. as I started burning that, uh, I was I was fine. I uh, burned a lot of punk wood as well. Uh, punk wood is like just dead wood. Mm. Uh, so a lot of the wood I was burning was punk wood, so filled with old termite crap. And uh, I was I was never bitten by a single mosquito that entire night. So don't worry, don't worry. Also, it's good to get that smoke on you, too. So once you start, you know, that termite poo smoke starts burning, just kind of stand in the smoke <laughs> and kind of, like, bathe in it, you know? Kind of act like some crazy hippie druid and, like, jump over the fire and get that smoke all over you. Uh, yeah. So it'll be fine. Uh, yep. That's just, uh, I don't know, it's one of those things where I didn't even know that I was that into survival shows until they they got, they had kind of a, a craze for a few years, and then they slowly died off which made me sad because i still enjoyed them but what was was uh what was your favorite survival show survivor man i'd say survivor man yeah and then i liked man vs wild obviously enough to yeah. parody it but uh yeah. i didn't enjoy it as much as survivor man because you could tell like they would do more extreme things like i'm gonna scale down the waterfall and jump <laughs> yeah. onto the thing and slide down and then fight a thing and it's yeah. like survivor man's just like i'm gonna go catch a rabbit Turtle. and then i'm gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah and then like teach you how to do this thing so was, and then yeah. i enjoyed uh i don't know if you saw dual survival yeah dual survival was good i, I really especially liked the loved first, uh, like first Matt Graham. yeah i like yeah. the first few seasons of it a yeah. lot and then they kind of got rid of the the yeah. main people and then i was got like, rid of yeah. cody man yeah poor cody he Loved didn't wear cody. shoes he didn't wear shoes <laughs> even in like freaking like frozen snow and this guy never wore shoes it was great <laughs> yeah it's like oh cody <laughs> love to meet that guy yeah. but I, I i loved matt too matt like I, I like the first episode where like joe meets matt and mm -hmm. like Matt is just he's been like surviving on an island by himself for like a week <laughs> already and he just like yeah. shows up and Matt's like made a flute like out of like you know like a piece of bamboo I'm like oh Matt <laughs> yeah. he's still my beating heart you know <laughs> <laughs> it was great I liked That's... uh I liked uh Naked and Afraid the most Naked and Afraid yeah I like that because uh they have um just like normal people but... and then you like yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah they got butts in it too but I mean yeah. 
You're taking just normal people and then putting them out in the wild and being like, this is what it was like to survive a long ass time ago. <laughs> it's like, oh my yeah. god. Like, this is hard. Like, I can't, like, I've had migraines a lot. I can't imagine having a migraine without oh, modern yeah. medicine of being like, I can take Advil and then stand in a shower and, like, blast my head with heat and then sleep it off. But, yeah. like, it's being in, like, an olden time, like, you don't have medicine, you don't have a shower, yeah. like, you just gotta be like, wow, this is extreme pain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> mm -hmm. I back uh, when I was really watching a lot of Naked and Afraid. I haven't watched it recently, but uh, when I was with um, uh, cause Naked and Afraid has been on air for a while. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was with that lady friend I was mentioning earlier, um, I remember always saying to her, I'd be like, oh, babe, you want to watch some porn together? And she'd be like, oh, yeah, and we'd turn on Naked and Afraid and, like, watch it. <laughs> That'd be great. Just watch Naked and Afraid all night. Do, like, a little marathon. So, that was always fun. I liked that. Yeah. But it was a good show. Especially when they did, uh, I don't know if you saw the episodes where they did, like, the mega Naked and Afraid when it was, like, 16 people. Oh, and they all I started like, in different areas. Yeah, I saw the ads for that, but I never actually saw it. I, I, I really liked the first episode a little bit, like, because some groups would do better than others, and, like, they would eventually come into contact with each other, and, like, the groups that were doing really well, they would be, like, you know, they would only have, like, these limited resources, and they're doing fine for themselves, and they'll be like, oh, heck, yeah, with these resources that we got, we'll survive, but then mm -hmm. suddenly four people just walked into camp, and we're like, hey, guys, want to share your mangoes? <laughs> And they're like, uh, uh, not really. So I, 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 I really liked that, like, old tribal, like, I mean, man, if I spent all this time, like, gathering a bunch of mangoes and coconuts and some dude walked up and he was like, hey, dude, you want to share those mangoes and coconuts with me? But no, <laughs> no, go find your own. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they were they were all nice and stuff. They were all like, "Yeah, you can sit with us," but you could tell they were so angry, like yeah. watching these people eating all their food <laughs> that they like spent all this time catching and collecting. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, I feel your pain, guys." But it, it was interesting the social dynamics. That's I why I don't it. really like Discovery Channel anymore because they got rid of a lot of those shows and they've gone more like, uh, I don't know, like there's big cars and like moonshine yeah. people like, <laughs> like yeah i don't care man or like yeah. alaska people like i don't care yeah. even even the history channel no, they, mean i the, mean the, they're the, the same channel. essentially yeah. <laughs> history's got like the gold people we go find gold and then uh the aliens and the they, no they got that what's that dumb show about the pawn shop <laughs> yeah, Pawn Stars. Pawn Stars. Oh my god, that show. Oh my god, I, I, I forgot I parodied that too, like five years ago. Dude, I, I mean, okay, I've been sick with a stomach ulcer uh, mm -hmm. recently. I mean, I, I still have it. I can even feel it while talking to you. Yeah. And I mean, like, there have been times when I've had to go like stay at my mother's house because I've been in so much pain and I've needed someone to watch over me. And uh, I, I'll be sitting there and I'll be watching the History Channel and I'll, or I'll be going through the, the, the channels on her television and I see, oh, the History Channel, what's on? Oh, from 4.30 to 5, Pawn Stars. From 5 to 5.30, Pawn Stars, Pawn Stars, Pawn Stars, Pawn Stars. I'm like, what? Like, I've seen, like, a few episodes of this show. Like, what is it about that show? Like, it's the same thing every time. God brings yeah. crap in. The dude says, hey, I got an expert on crap. Let me go tell him to look at your crap. The guy says, yeah. yep, that's a lot of crap. And then the dude says, all right, I'll give it to you for this much, you know, this this crappy amount of money. And they're like, all right, deal. And then they, they shake hands. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, it's like one of the least entertaining shows I've ever watched. I would say, like, I enjoyed it for about a month. And then I stopped watching. I'd say the reason people enjoy it is either they enjoy seeing the old items like, okay. this is a musket from 1762. <laughs> they're just like, <laughs> wow, that is an old what? item. And then they're just like, well, I'll give you like, <laughs> it's worth about 8000 I'll give you like five bucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta like, make money on it, man. Yeah, I gotta make money. I gotta, you know, put it to auction. I gotta do the thing. I gotta wrap it up. I gotta put it in my case. I gotta buy a new Tesla. You're like, what, what, what <laughs> <are> you? <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess five bucks works. I, you know I, what? I, I How about did... ten? 
I did like the big fat guy, the, the one that oh, always yeah, made the deals. Oh yeah, Because he had that really like wheezy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> even do it. Like, I don't see how he does it. <laughs> super, Mookluck can do a wheeze laugh so good. I can't. Is like, it like the... <laughs> yeah, like that. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> it literally just hurts my like. <laughs> <laughs> but he does it, he does it. Oh my gosh, I've just seen like all like the, the epic meme pictures of that guy like laughing and doing that mm. weed laugh like <laughs> i love it that was the best part of the show whenever that guy giggled <laughs> yeah but it's, it's uh i don't know it's they're all they're all just doing what's best for their ratings i mean somebody's yeah, got to yeah, be course. watching it i don't yeah, know yeah, who, of course but... <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know. Probably like half your commenters are gonna attack me. Be like, Nixian, that's the best show ever. You're stupid. <laughs> I love Pawn Stars. You dumb. I'm wearing a Pawn Star T-shirt right now. You idiot. <laughs> Gosh. Um, so. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Survival uh, and history aside. Yeah, survival and history aside. Let's talk. Uh, let's get a little more into WoW. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Uh, wow. So there's a planet behind us. There is a planet behind us. I just re yeah. I was realizing that earlier. Like you can see that you can see Argus or whatever from everywhere now. Yeah, it's everyone can crazy. see it. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> what do you think uh what do you think so far of all the all the Argus stuff? Um I haven't seen too much because I have just kind of been I, I admit I guys I've I've just been playing so much Oblivion lately the Elder Scrolls Oblivion just having a good time playing that and I've uh, been playing a lot of Dark Souls 3 recently so I haven't really been uh, paying too much of attention to like the new WoW news mm -hmm. um, I mean I know you know I've seen like some of the spoiler stuff and I've seen like the tier sets and obviously I've seen the giant freaking planet you know that's mm -hmm. behind me right now but um it looks all right. Uh, the the only thing that gets me, and this is my only complaint uh, so far, one of the things that I loved about World of Warcraft back in the day, and it's something that I've loved about WoW all the way up to now, mm -hmm. is that whenever Blizzard released WoW, and they released Kalimdor in the Eastern Kingdoms, and Burning Crusade without land, and Northrend, and so on and so forth, they gave you the entire world. Yeah. Um, they didn't give you a piece of the Eastern Kingdoms or a piece of Kalimdor. Like you could go from coast to coast. Hmm. You know, if you could find a way, you could glitch your way up a mountain. Like they gave you the entire world. In Argus, um, they give you a small area and they just have like distant terrain painted with a map painting. And I've seen that in other MMOs and I don't like that. And obviously I know they can't, like before someone crucifies me, yes, I know they can't give us an entire planet in a content patch, I get that. But WoW has never done that before, never. And so it really like stands out to me as like, oh, like you've never done that before Blizzard. Why you do that? I don't <laughs> like that. I, I hate that. I don't like, I, I don't, when I play an MMO, the main reason why I'm playing it is I want to feel immersed in the world. Mm. And seeing a place that I can see but I can't get to, it like breaks my immersion, essentially. It reminds me that I'm playing a video game. <laughs> and those are Satan's work. That's, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Satan's business right there, boy. <laughs> so playing them video games. But yeah, so um, that, that's one thing that I really appreciated about WoW. And that's something that I just really didn't like about other MMOs. Even those MMOs that would come out and people would be like, oh, this is going to be the WoW killer. This is going to yeah. be the WoW killer. Like Star Wars The Old Republic, for example, I had tons of like distant terrain map paintings and blah, mm. blah, blah. So I really want to feel like I've got the whole world, you know, in my hands and I can go anywhere and do anything. So but that's my only complaint. It's a very minor complaint. You know, I'm not, you know, yeah. I wouldn't get up on a building and shout that, you know, it's a very minor complaint, but it is a small complaint. My thing know? is like, I don't know. I think it's just uh, like a min It almost feels like a mini expansion patch. It, it does. Yeah, that too. But at the same time, I don't have the same excitement as I would for an expansion. And I don't know if it's because my friends aren't as into it <coughs> or, um, if it's just like there's no crazy content like new class new race new blah yeah, but yeah. it's just, just kind of like here's another place to explore but it's like 
I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint it, but I just don't have that same level of excitement as I do for a brand new expansion or something like that. Well, it is like essentially, I mean, I mean, look, it's a giant planet. I mean, look at it up there. It's huge. And you get like this little tiny area of it. Yeah. Like and it's it's not like it's not even the like the area is like cut off by like oceans or like space or anything. It's just like you're pretty much I, I have not played in the PTR. I don't know. But from what I saw in screenshots, it's like you're up on like a giant ledge, essentially. Mm hmm. And like you just get this little tiny piece of this giant rock planet. And so, I mean, I'm pretty sure Blizzard is going to do, they'll probably turn Argus into a full-fledged expansion at some point in the future and mm -hmm. give us the, the whole planet. It would be the first time they've given us, I mean, the, the whole planet is a rock. Yeah. So, I mean, it would be kind of strange not having oceans separating continents, you know. Like, you actually can, like, oh, yeah. walk around the world, you know? How crazy mm -hmm. would that be? That is kind of um, crazy now I think about it. Yeah, so I don't know if Blizzard can pull that off, but I don't know. But, I guess they'd um, separate with mountains. I guess, yeah. They, I mean, it just, it seems so, like, it, it, yeah, to, like, put a giant planet up in the air and to only give us this little tiny area of it, nah, like, Blizzard, it's definitely going to be an expansion at some point. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole planet or something, you know, or at least a giant chunk of the planet. Yeah. But, well, speaking of <clears throat> expansion stuff, there's all yeah. the, uh... The Kul Taras things that everybody yeah. was freaking out about. I talked to Noble about it because I was like, I don't know a lot of lore. <laughs> Noble, I'm going to ask Noble. you questions. You mean yeah. Noble? Well, here's the thing. I asked him if it was Noble <laughs> or Noble, and he was like, it is Noble. So I was like, I'm right. He's wrong. <laughs> well, or he's wrong. That's possible. He's wrong. I'm right. <laughs> I should know. I'm not the creator of the name. <laughs> it's Noble. <laughs> so saith uh, me. <laughs> Cred or eh, comments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> either way, right, go on. he. Uh, I pretty much asked him. I was like, "Why can this be an expansion? This seems like it's not enough stuff to actually be an expansion." He's like, "Well, this is why it is. This is it." And so he uh, <laughs> he pretty much told me. And after listening to him, tell me why it could be an expansion. I'm like, you know what? All right, I'm excited for this. Uh, mm -hmm. So, would you be excited for a Culturas expansion, or do you want something else? Um, um, would I be excited for a Kul Taras expansion? It depends what they put in it. Mm -hmm. Um, oh boy, <laughs> I could start going on like a huge rant about something, <laughs> but to, to keep things simple, um, I'm not as into WoW as I used to be, mm -hmm. uh, in the past. I mean, I still love the game and I really. I really want to see the game succeed. Uh, I really want to see the game hit like 20 million subs or more one mm -hmm. day. I would love to see that. Um, but without going into like a huge discussion, I, I think that a lot of the decisions that Blizzard has made recently has made that impossible. It's never going to happen, which breaks my heart. But uh, so when it comes to the Kul Taras expansion, it depends what they it, it depends what they're going to put in it. Um, I would really like to see, uh, there's really nothing I would like to see, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I, I, I mean, like at whatever they show off, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's cool. You know, but I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to like freak out over it essentially. Like I've kind of, yeah. I, I, I've, I've felt like a lot of my wow spark has kind of gone out lately. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, I still enjoy like making machinima videos and stuff. And I think they're the reason why I can still do a machinima video and get like really excited about it is you can do anything in a machinima video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once you have mastered the power of After Effects, I mean, if you want to make a giant robot attack Stormwind City, you can do it. You know, I mean, you can do mm -hmm. anything. So, uh, wow, it's just that medium for me to tell silly stories. Well, what uh, do you think? Uh, made that spark go out then oh gosh <laughs> you're, tr you're trying to get me into the <laughs> rant um uh, <laughs> i mean we got uh, uh, essentially to keep things simple uh i feel that blizzard has man how to explain <laughs> it how to explain it in three sentences rather than three hours because i've i've talked about this for hours with people mm -hmm. um 
essentially, I feel that Blizzard has not made community building the center of World of Warcraft and like their design decisions lately. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like, like for example, I am of the opinion uh, that it should not be possible in this game to go from level 1 to 110 and kill the last boss without saying a single word to somebody. It it should be impossible, but it is possible Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I... I, I'm a big fan of like, I mean, I started playing WoW back in vanilla and I, I'm a big fan of like WoW in its earlier years, uh, vanilla BC, even like mm. early Wrath, not late Wrath though, um, because WoW kind of, it, it was, it like forced you to like communicate with other players. It forced you to make friends and to work together with people mm-hmm. and uh you know everything even like the littlest things like hey can you buff me with power word fortitude sure can you give me mark of the wild even little things like that got players talking about things and communicating and mm-hmm. you saw like you know during this time wow's population up 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 but i i feel that once blizzard kind of shifted their philosophy maybe because activision bought them during wrath or whatever um they kind of started turning wow more into like a um they they were trying to appeal to a greater audience and i think that that was a mistake Uh, Mm -hmm. i I think the most important thing in an mmorpg is essentially you are trying to simulate another world uh, in an Mm -hmm. mmo and the thing that makes i guess our world this world real life so special is our ability to meet people and make friends and you know uh work together to overcome the challenges of life whether it's financial or personal or whatever and when you kind of when you create a game that kind of simulates that you know like people working together to overcome challenges people make friends and they fall in love and they stick together and this is when you you know you see wow's population climbing 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 uh, and then once you take the, once you start turning, you know, the MMO into like a single player game, or it could be played as a single player game, mm-hmm. and there is no incentive to talk to people anymore, you start seeing people lose their interest, and people aren't making friends anymore, and people aren't communicating, and people have no reason to stick around because their friends aren't playing the game anymore. None of my friends play WoW anymore. I mean, no yeah. one plays WoW. No one that I pl- used to play WoW with plays the game anymore. I'm the only one. I mean, Uh, it's extremely true because I think this was probably one of my favorite expansions since Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think one of the reasons I actually enjoyed it as much as I did was because I had friends playing it. And so they'd be like, I'd be like, oh, dude, I'm farming stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to farm stuff. And so I'd like hop on and like it's just that makes it that much fun. And when I think back to when I had the most fun in WoW, it was always when I had a group of like close friends that were playing the game that I could hop on and be like, Oh, Hey guys. And then even when I, when I think back on it, like every time I ask people their favorite memories in wow, and like all 30 episodes of this I've done now, it always ties back into hanging out with people or some sort of community driven experience. Yeah. Hanging out with people, meeting people, you know, I've, uh, maybe you've seen like I've told stories uh, you know on my channel about like my first big world PvP experience Terran Mill versus South Shore and how I got my <laughs> level 40 mount for free back in the day totally, <laughs> yeah. totally swindled a guy who actually became a friend of mine um, yeah, I've told lots of stories but yeah you know my fond memories come from the people that I've met in the game and uh, even going as far as meeting them in real life later on down the road. Kind of like, you know, I was talking about that dude and his wife earlier. You know, I, mm-hmm. I met them through streaming WoW. So technically not WoW, but kind of mm-hmm. WoW. Um, yeah. You know, so the people are what make an MMO. Uh, the, the, the community is what makes an MMO strong and what makes an MMO thrive. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, even... I think it would have been cool, like even in Legion. I mean, Legion is a fantastic expansion. I've loved the content in it. Not everything, but I've loved most of it. Uh, But even like, you know, maybe with the artifact system, I I thought it would have been maybe kind of cool, like instead of going on this like solo quest line to, you know, get your staff or your hammer or whatever, 
what if it was like you know five mages like you and four other mages and you all like work together to like get this you know get these artifacts or whatever uh, mm-hmm. to use you know so it's like oh everybody's like having a polymorph like mobs and use blink and you know use different spells at different times you really had to work together you and your fellow mages mm-hmm. you know enjoying the class fantasy together because essentially i mean even like the class order hall there's no difference <laughs> whether you know there's people in there or not mm-hmm. you know there's 100 people in there who cares if there's no people in there who cares you know it doesn't change <laughs> yeah. the experience at all you know, when's the last time you had a conversation in your class order hall? I mean, well, it's, I, I've, I've never had one. I think it's similar so. to, like, if you were to go downtown, like, as someone who lives near a big city, like, I can go downtown and I can walk around and I'm, you know, I'm near thousands, <coughs> millions of people. And yet, it's like, you know, they're just, they're going about their day. I'm not talking to them. I'm not forming connections with them. And that's what it kind of feels like. The other people are just there. And it's like, I don't really care, (laughs) you know, they're doing their thing. It's not like I'm getting to know someone. Yeah, exactly. I, um, you know, it just, uh, to just explain something to the, uh, the viewers, uh, just like, you know, where am I really coming from with this? Uh, a lot of my best friends, you know, were made, uh, through WoW. And, you know, I remember a time and maybe even you remember at this time because you've played since vanilla Mm -hmm. Um, back during vanilla BC wrath when people would say on trade chat, like, you know, guys, like, wow, just hit 9 million subs. What? You know, guys, wow, just hit 10 million subs. What? You know, (laughs) wow, wow, just hit 12 million. What? You know, (laughs) freaking out. And now it's the exact opposite. It's like, hey, guys, Blizzard won't even report their sub numbers anymore, like, because (laughs) they've dropped so low. It's like, oh, you know, it's kind of breaks my heart, man. Like, this this game is my childhood, you know, so Mm -hmm. it kind of, it hits me in the feels, man. Well, I think <laughs> one of the reasons that this expansion was actually received so well is because they were doing this expansion right after Garrisons. And yeah. Garrisons were just like, hey guys, do you like playing the game by yourself? Because here it is. <laughs> here Literally it is. single player game. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. wow, uh, that's cool. I don't even have to go into the world. I'm just here. They, they definitely have uh, made some really good uh, improvements in Legion. I Again, I've very much enjoyed Legion. I think Legion was definitely a step in the right direction. And I have, uh, you know, even, the, even though I'm like, you know, complaining a little bit about some mm-hmm. of Blizzard's decisions over the years, um, you know, in the case of Legion, it, it blows my mind, like how much of a 180 Blizzard did with Legion compared to Warlords. Mm-hmm. Um, Warlords, the, I mean like what content like you know like where was the <laughs> yeah. con you know and then like with legion it's like they release a, a new patch and then like one day later it's like hey we've got the next patch on the ptr you want to play it you know <laughs> yeah. i mean they, they're just pumping out content and cinematics and like just everything like oh my gosh like the team over at blizzard is like an overdrive mm. and i i really like that passion it seems like compare i mean when it came to Warlords of Draenor, it was almost like I got the impression that like the passion for WoW was gone in Blizzard yeah. Entertainment. It was just they were making more money with Hearthstone, which is true, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they their other products, you know like Overwatch, Overwatch and stuff. They yeah. they were making more money on that WoW. You know, up okay, forget WoW. It's a sinking ship. Mm-hmm. But with Legion, it seems like that 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 kick that spark is back, and it's been really refreshing to see that and to feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, it gives hope again. It gives me hope. Yes. <laughs> well, I'd really so, love if they did a type of player housing. And I know a lot of people cool. would love that. And I know a lot of, like, they've said for so long, like, I don't know about player housing. But it's like, you look at games like yeah. Final Fantasy, Star Wars, The Old Republic even had it. Yeah. Um, Wildstar. Yeah, Wildstar. I think Guild Wars 2 is doing it in their new expansion. Like, uh, player housing is great because you're encouraging <coughs> people, like, friends to create a place to hang out in the game and be like, yeah. hey, we can, like, you know, decorate this how we want. We can have our, like, achievements and things here. Like, I think mm-hmm. it's it allows you to create your own fun and your own experiences, and that's what makes these games the most fun. It's it's uh, Player House. Uh, I did a video on Player Housing a little while ago. Um, player Housing is just another form of progression. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the whole point of, you know, WoW is just to make your character better. But for some people, maybe they're not interested in making their character better. Maybe they want to make their house better. Mm. You know, they want to, like, find, instead of new gear for their character, they want to find a new piece of furniture, you know, a 
a new you know color of wallpaper like you know like whatever mm -hmm. um and there are people out there that would probably say like oh no 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 like nobody cares about that but no i mean like even the achievement system i mean people dedicate hours and hours and hours to get like pointless achievements <laughs> yeah. just to say like oh yeah i got like these many achievement points mm -hmm. i mean people will dedicate hours and hours and hours to you know get a freaking chair model you know for their like, <laughs> yeah. dining room table in their player house I would love to see player housing in WoW. I would love to see them use this uh, this instancing technology that they've been, you know, experimenting with over the past two expansions. Um, you know, being able to build something and see it in the open world, even when you're like flying, you know, a hundred miles away from it, kind of like mm -hmm. the garrison. Um, I, I would love that. Uh, yeah, I did a now whole you video have the on power it. To but... like invite yeah. your friends to wherever you are it doesn't have to be server based like hey you're on a different server than me come see my house anyway like it doesn't matter yeah. you can just have it work the exact same way that um the garrisons worked uh or the garrison mm -hmm. you know whoever's the group leader like that's the house that you see um i i, I imagine that, that if they did do player housing um they would have like plots like all throughout the world Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to start Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. So maybe like, for example, like right here where we are, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe there'd be like, this is a house plot. So you yeah. could build a house here. Um, and if, you know, if, if you're in my group and I build my house here, you'll, you can see it. Yeah. You know, but and like if have, let's like, say various predetermined plots in various zones. Yeah. But if like you built your house here too, so we both had our house in the same spot, you know, if mm -hmm. I was the group leader, you would see my house, not your house, obviously. Yeah. So, um, I, because I don't think Blizzard, I mean, we're, it's, WoW is still running off like a very old engine. Yeah. Uh, it's running off the Warcraft 3 engine, if I'm not mistaken, unless they updated it in expansion. So it's still very limited. So I don't think that they could ever do something like you could just build a house wherever you want. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think that's possible. I even think but. even just the, the item options they could have could even encourage you to go into the world. Like imagine you're like, you can get a plaque of Hogger's head, like, like yeah, Hogger yeah. on a plank or something. You just hang it on your wall, but you had to go kill Hogger again. Like you could Definitely. encourage you to go do things in the world and that would tie into your house. Definitely. I mean, you could even put like items that, uh, you know, like they only drop or can only be obtained if you do like let's say the the, the latest mythic raid or something mm -hmm. you know like oh you know you want this like you know, want this like throne or something that this boss sits on well mm -hmm. you gotta go you know do the mythic version of the raid and it becomes like obtainable or something yeah um, you know even stuff like that i mean that's just a random example or just you know if not that then oh well you know you kill mythic kill Jaden, you know, you can mount his head on your wall or something. Mm -hmm. So something like that. I'm pretty uh, but... hopeful it'll happen too, because I mean, they've already experimented with Garrison. So I mean, they have yeah. some sort of player housing-esque thing yeah. to work off of. I, I, I really want to see player housing. It, it would really rekindle like a big spark for me. Uh, but I really want to see an in-depth player housing thing. I don't, I, I, you know, I'm playing a Night Elf and you're a Dwarf. You know, I really... If I build a house, I, I don't want to. I don't want to build a human house. I want to build yeah. a night elf house, you mm -hmm. know, with my wisps and shit. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like that. I want to live in a tree. Damn it, that's where mm -hmm. I belong. <laughs> so, you know, and you can build your little hobbit hole, like dig it into the side of the hill <laughs> yeah. behind us. Go live in there. <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be cool. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's. I just want them to, to keep improving. Imp or. Uh, Imp not improvising, but uh, what's mm -hmm. the word I'm looking for? Innovating. I want innovating. To keep innovating. I also want to see like guild halls, you know, along with yeah. the player housing. I would love to see, I, again, like I really care about uh, the players, you know, engaging, building a community, a very strong, healthy community. And guild halls, I think, would be a fantastic way to do this. You know, guilds working together to decorate like their spot. You mm -hmm. know, that all the, their guild members can enjoy. Like, they could fill the guild hall with vendors that sell certain items. Um, you know, like, whatever. You know, like, all the, like, the little things you can get. Like, all the little perks from, you know, like, being in a guild. Like, mm -hmm. items you can get. They're sold there. Maybe they can add some more unique things that can be obtained from, like, being in a guild and going to the guild hall. Uh, you have to give me time to think about it. But guild halls, uh, I think, would be really cool. 
Yeah, um, I love the idea of a guild hall as well. So, I mean, it's also it's encouraging you to just hang out with friends in a place. Like it's it all just ties back into hanging out with people. Yeah, exactly, definitely. But as long as they really bring out, like you know, I I, I really want to have the ability to like if I want to put a chair on the ceiling. Damn it! <laughs> I want to be able to put a chair on the ceiling. Like <laughs> I should be able to do anything. <laughs> you know, if I if I want my house to literally be just a big like clusterfuck of just garbage <laughs> when you open the front door, like just like things floating in the air, like you can't even move, like there's just crap <laughs> everywhere. Damn it, that's what I want. Like, you know, give me that customization, you know, I just mean, to make a big mess, make it look like my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> can't take one step. They have so many, like, there's so many facets of the game now as well. Like, even pet battles. You could have a, you have a little, like, thing for a pet that just chills in your yeah. house. You, know, you get one pet that gets to chill in the house. Like, there's my alligator pen. There's <laughs> my alligator. It's my yeah. pet alligator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your pet just, like, wanders around the house or something or wanders around the front yard. Yeah. Kind of like, cool. Like, uh, like you were talking about, the main thing you enjoy with WoW is just the world and, like, machinimas let you do whatever you want. Like, that's why I still enjoy doing machinimas and still doing pointless top tens is that it, it lets me go into the world and explore. And I don't have yeah. to be like, well, I'm going to spend my time in Legion because that's the latest thing. It's like, no, I can go back to Azeroth and I can go back to Outland. I can go wherever I want and just be like, oh, there's some cool stuff here. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on that. But also, uh, yeah, go on with that, being able to build, you know, houses on, like, uh, plots in the old world, but also it would get players back into the old world. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I don't know about you, but, like, my <laughs> my favorite area of WoW is the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. I mean, mm -hmm. just these original two continents. I mean, they're so, they're so diverse, and there's so much lore behind them, you know, with Warcraft 3 and stuff. Yeah. Um, like, I... I, I love them. So, you know, like what, the reason why I chose Silver Pine Forest, for example, is I was going to go with Tears Fall Glades, but I really love Silver Pine Forest because uh, one of my most fond memories of WoW is I remember my friend Ben, he had a, you know, he had a higher level character than me when I first started on WoW. Hmm. And he warned me about Silver Pine Forest. And he said, be careful of those that wander amongst the trees. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you'll see. And oh my gosh, I didn't know what he meant for the longest time. And then finally, when a freaking son of Arugal like ran after me from behind a tree, <laughs> it scarred me for life. I'll never forget. It was terrifying. <laughs> so then I understood what he was talking about, sons of Arugal. So shout out to the, shun the sons of Arugal <laughs> and how they used to kill everybody in this zone. I do remember that. I actually forgot about that as well. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, I'll never yeah, forget. It was scarred me for life. I think part of the fun of Vanilla WoW, because I was talking about this earlier with some people, part of the fun of Vanilla WoW for me was just, it was new. So it's like yeah. nobody really knew anything. It's this fresh new thing. Not many people played MMORPGs at the time anyway. Yeah. Uh, but like, there was no, there was no data mining. There is mm -hmm. no like crazy stuff like that. like we know everything about the next thing coming out. It's just like I'm gonna go explore this world that I've never I don't know anything about it, and I'm gonna see what's uh, what's what there is. And it was like yeah. that was that was half the fun. You ever miss like uh, random question? You ever miss the old internet? Yeah. Like remember the old internet? Like remember yeah. World of Warcraft dot com? <laughs> screenshot yeah. of the day like that old format dude i've yeah there are like there are websites where you can like see like they kind of saved like old websites mm -hmm. and you can kind of go and rebrowse them and i've gone and like rebrowsed old world of warcraft.com and i'm like oh man i remember like oh sh you know like <laughs> oh burning crusade coming out in like six months it's like oh my gosh like <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, remember like MySpace and before Facebook, like the old internet when YouTube yeah. was just starting. Yeah, old internet was best internet. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it now. I went to the uh, the Wayback Machine. Yeah, yeah. You do it, and it's oh my god. Yeah, this dude. is this is some I love, good stuff. Dude, I used to spend all the time on World of Warcraft .com just like reading about all the lore. Cause I, I mean, I didn't know nothing about. I had never played like a Warcraft game before a while, so yeah. I was like, "Wow, look at the orcs!" And "Well, look at the undead!" It's so cool. <laughs> and I had never played an MMO before, so it was just like it mm. blew my mind. It's like this other world. 
So it is. Uh, it's definitely part nostalgia. So I think yeah. I grew up with that old internet as well, and it was like everything loaded slow. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, the dial-up play the dial-up like, internet. I remember oh, playing like shitty flash games. Oh uh, yeah, like like balloons. You ever played yeah. balloons or like monkey? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Addictinggames.com. Yep. Addictinggames.com. Newgrounds. <laughs> yep. Newgrounds. Funny I got all my com. I got all my music from Newgrounds when I started YouTube. Oh yeah. Yeah, I really. I would always enjoy going to Newgrounds. It's like, oh, there's some like people <coughs> making music here. I like some of these songs, and like, so I can help like promote them on top of like finding cool music for the credits. And then I'd get people being like, oh man, I saw you linked my credit music in the video. Thanks for that. And I'd be like, yeah, dude, like, it's a good song. Did did you ever go to uh, funnyjunk.com back in the day? I did go to funnyjunk.com. I I remember fond memory here. I've never told this story before on stream or anywhere. Mm-hmm. Funnyjunk.com was the first website I ever went to and that it well, okay. So I remember back when GIFs were a new thing on the internet. Mm-hmm. Okay. And on funnyjunk.com, <laughs> a lot of people embraced the GIF Mm. And funnyjunk.com was the first website where I got exposed to porn. (laughs) Like, I'll never forget, like, my friend was spending the night over at my house. His name was David. And we were on funnyjunk.com and we were watching Madness. Do you remember Madness? Like the violent little flash animations. Oh, yeah. Madness, yep. So we were watching Madness and there was this gif. And we saw it on the side, and it was a woman like lifting her shirt up, and we were like, <laughs> and we like clicked it, and we we're like, whoa, like you can see this, like this is on the internet, like why would she do that, like, like what's wrong with her, you know? <laughs> and my mother, uh, this is back when my mother and my sister, or my sister used the same computer as me, and she would look at my search history, and she mm. found that, and she showed my mom, and I got in so much trouble, and I was like. <laughs> No, no, no! It was a we accidentally clicked it. It was an accident. Like, you know, <laughs> my mom didn't believe me, but she kind of yeah. believed me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but oh yeah, I remember whew, those days. <laughs> those were the good old days. Back when the PC section and in, in Walmart actually meant something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I used to I used to love going to the stores and just seeing all the computer computer games and all the boxes yeah. that, like all over. There's there just something to, to seeing actual boxes with games in them that just felt really cool. Yep. And then came Gaben. Gabe. God damn it, Gaben. God damn it, Gabe. And his <laughs> steam. Just <laughs> ruining everything. No, I, I still always like if I if I can get the box, I will get the box. I want to mm-hmm. I want to hold that thing in my hand. It's like yeah. a book. It's like you, yeah. when you read a book, it's like I enjoy the physical <laughs> copy of a book. Yeah, me too. And man, it's not I'll, even just to be like, man, I love it. It's like it gives me eye strain when I look at a tablet or something. Yeah, I don't. It's anybody watching this or listening. If you if you read off a tablet, like I don't I don't know how you do it, man. I just yes. like I like to feel that thumb ache, you know, where like your thumb like hurts <laughs> from holding ache. the pages back. It's like, Ugh, ow, it hurts. <laughs> but I gotta know what happens next. <laughs> yep. I've just been browsing through the old World of Warcraft <laughs> website as we've been talking. It's it is crazy. Yeah. Like I remember this. Like I remember so much of this. Even the professions. Because I remember when I yeah. first wanted to play WoW. I went on the worldwarcraft.com and I was like, wow, this new game's coming out. Like, or actually, I think it had been out for like a few weeks at that point. It was like late November of 2004. And mm. then I was like, well, professions. And I clicked it and I was like, you can be a cook and a, and a fisherman. I'm going to do those as my professions. Like, not <laughs> yeah. even realizing that they're secondary professions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember like, I always thought it would be like when I, when I looked at the engineer uh profession page i thought like well i can make like robots and stuff like wow so cool <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i didn't realize you know at the time just a bunch of dynamite and pvp stuff but <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, i think uh my one of my first characters that i played yeah it was the first ever character i played i had him be an engineer and he was a warlock so you know i would throw dynamite at people and it was nice <laughs> but that was on my friend's computer at the time. He would just let me play WoW whenever I was over at his house. 
you know, because I wanted to play so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My computer was crap. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you a question. Um, we were talking about WorldOfWarcraft.com, the old internet, FunnyJunk.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had it. Um, I'll remember it in a minute. All right. Well, while you remember, I was going through OldWorldWarcraft.com. This is April fifth, two thousand four, and okay. I found uh, there's no gnomes, there's no um, I don't think was it no tarn. I don't think there's yeah. any tar. No wait, no orc tarn, undead troll, there's dwarves. No night elves, right? Wait, there are night. Oh, oh, here's what it is. They've added two-headed ogres. Oh yeah? Two-headed ogres. Choosing the two-headed player race. By selecting the two-headed ogre race, you are selflessly choosing to share your existence in WoW with another player. That is, you are staking claim to one half of the ogre. As a two-headed ogre, you'll have control of one head and one arm at all times. Your other half will be controlled by a second player. That had I feel to have been like April Fool's joke. <laughs> it has, like, but this is from 2004. April yeah, 5th, 2004? Maybe it's like a like a long April Fool's joke because Blizzard oh, used to they used to put yeah. their like April Fool's jokes up for a couple of days. Remember? That's true. Yeah. This must, this had to be like one of their first April Fool's jokes. Though. I remember they did a yeah. like Chinese food one where you could order Chinese food. <laughs> I don't remember that. It was like a Pandaren one back in. It was like as old as this. And they were oh, like, oh, you can order pan or Chinese food through Wow now or something like that. <laughs> oh. No, I don't. I don't remember that one. Chinese food. Wow, April Fool. It's got to be here. Pandaren Express. That's what they called it. Oh yeah, Pandar. Yeah, okay. That was I remember April first, two thousand five. Two thousand five. It was a year into Wow. Simply yeah. type slash panda in game, and a GM will take your food order. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, could you imagine if they ever added pandas to the game? Like how crazy is that? Yeah, like that would be, be a joke, really. Yeah, he's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember those conversations back in the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pandas. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never do that. They'll never do that. Um, dude, uh, dude, I heard that in the new expansion, Burning Crusade, that uh, Alliance players will get to play as the High Elves. <laughs> I hear that Horde will get to play as Paladins, and Alliance will play as Shamans. That's fucking stupid. They would <laughs> never do that. They wouldn't do that. They would never do that. You're stupid. <laughs> Uninstall the game, retard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... I remember actually seeing that happen. And oh, yeah? I remember just being like, this is just the dumbest thing ever. Why would they do that? This is... Like, mm -hmm. this, this, it's going to kill the game. It's going to kill the game. Yep. <laughs> I was also, you know, like 15 or 16 in high school. Yeah. So. I remember when BC first came out. I remember buying it at Walmart. I remember sniffing the box. Oh, Dude, I forget. always sniff the box. Dude, you got to sniff the box. You got to sniff the box. Guys, I mean, if you've <laughs> never sniffed the box, like, you haven't even lived yet. Like, you're not even a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the first that dude, whenever I buy a game, before I even buy the game, I gotta sniff the box and make Hashtag sure it smells gamer. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, gotta sniff the box. Dude, I my, my I still have like my old like wow boxes and they still smell the, the exact same. I do I'm too. Just, I've kept I them on the shelf. Box. You know. Sometimes I'll grab them just in nostalgia and take a big whiff and be like, <laughs> oh, just smell my childhood. Mm-hmm. Takes me back. Oh man. Dude, there's some and, old games like like Empire Earth or like some really old RTS games. Their manuals are like 200 pages long. They're like an oh, actual book. It's crazy. Oh, I know. I, I love like games, any game like recently that has kind of like, like I really liked The Witcher 3 when they kind of gave you like the little manual and they mm -hmm. gave you like two maps. Uh, they gave you like a poster and a small map. Like, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. And they gave you this the soundtrack, like CD Projekt Red, like way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, man, you used to buy games back in the day. Like, even like the WoW manual, like back in the yeah. day, was pretty thick. It was like, you know, hundred and something pages long. Yeah, I would just read that thing. I know, I would too. <laughs> just like go on a car trip. Like I'll bring my WoW manual. Yeah, just read about WoW. <laughs> I already know everything in it. Whoa, warlocks are masters of destruction and affliction. And, whoa, and so many. I games. remember they were like Tarn are too big for mounts. So they get the Plains Runner ability. Uh, 
Yep, I remember that. <laughs> Torn. <laughs> Running quickly. Dumb. But it's like, that's one of the things that's just been lost in today's gaming <coughs> things as well. It's like, I feel like if you make a game and you actually put that stuff in, like, a, uh, like you can make it a pretty unique game by doing that at this point. Because nobody else does it. Yeah. You see, the thing is, is uh, as well, when it comes to, like, gamers and, like, people nowadays, um, mm. you know, kind of going back to, like, when we were talking earlier about, like, WoW and its changes over the years. And, um, you see, I, when, when people say, like, oh, gamers have changed over the years, like, oh, they don't, they don't care about, like, you know, getting a big book or something mm -hmm. of lore and information. They don't care about being a part of, like, an online community. I completely disagree. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think people have changed at all. I think people still love ha like having a strong sense of achievement. People still love being a part of a community. People love, you know, like, you know, with The Witcher 3, like, oh, dude, I got two posters and this, like, Witcher book, and I got the soundtrack. Like, oh, it's so mm -hmm. fucking cool. You know, pe people love that stuff, and they appreciate that stuff, and I would love to see, you know, more game companies do that kind of stuff. Um, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what you yeah. mean. <laughs> I don't think people oh, yeah. have changed. I think, I think it's more of the game companies have essentially streamlined everything, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's, it, that's it removes that kind of the heart from it all. It's like, well, we're not going to put that in because that's an extra expense. We don't want to put that. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Just trying to trying to save money. We mm -hmm. can't put that in. We got to make money with microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, which ironically, it's like we're at a point where people are playing the most games i think ever and yet yeah. we've like lost so much of what we used to have that made games kind of have a like soul essentially like oh wow i opened this box that had like a map it had like a picture it had a thing it had a big ass manual like yeah i don't have that anymore it's like i just clicked a button click buy and it's pre app uh, early access pre-alpha dlc i'm dude the, the thing that i'm waiting for is right now um I am waiting for the next uh, the next Halo to come along. Now, mm. when I say that, I don't mean Halo Six. Like you, pro you probably remember it. Oh my gosh! Like the 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 hype for Halo Three before it came out. Like, like you couldn't go to like everybody was talking about Halo. Mm -hmm. Like before Halo Three came out. Like I'm waiting for like the next big like oh my god game to come out. And I, I know some people will say like, oh, well, you know, like maybe like The Witcher 3. Like, yeah, The Witcher 3 had like a, a lot of buzz. But man, compared to that Halo buzz back in the day, Halo 2, Halo 3, well, I've never like, seen anything like it. They're essentially like, like game change, like industry changers, like World of Warcraft, yeah. Halo. Like they define the genre that they're a part of. Yeah, like. Or even League of that. Legends, Dota. Yeah, like, yeah. They, like how they kind of created this whole, quote, MOBA. I know people are like, yeah, is that a MOBA scene? game? But yeah, the, yeah. the that yeah, scene, <laughs> like those yeah. types of games. At Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft, yeah, Minecraft comes Minecraft. along, and now everyone and their mother is making survival games. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I mean, like that's another game. Like those types of games create they either create a new genre or they like innovate the old genre. Yeah, it's just like I mean, I think the closest thing that I kind of got to that. Uh, Halo 3 vibe, but it, it really only took hold after the game came out was when Skyrim was released. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember standing at the midnight release for Skyrim, and I, I still have the video uh, footage of it uh, on my hard drive of me and my friends like standing, drinking Yoo-Hoo's, you know, outside of GameStop with like the big line of people. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm really, I'm waiting for that next Halo. You know, I'm waiting for that next Skyrim, that like big game that everybody's talking about that like you know that the line for the release is like miles long like uh mm -hmm. just like the the big kahuna like a tidal wave in the gaming industry it's like so big and when halo 3 came out like every news station was talking about it it was so yeah. big like i mean so damn you know so we'll see what it is we'll see what it is you know? see. Could it be World of Warcraft again? Could it be could the be, next? Could, could it be, it be WoW, World two? <laughs> WoW 2? WoW 2. It's got to be WoW 2. Yeah, WoW 2. Well, <laughs> well that's no. why I always, with WoW 2 and stuff, people always were like, oh, but can I transfer my character over? I'm like, no, you can't transfer your character. Like, it's going to be a brand new game. Like, it's yeah. not going to be the same game. Yeah. I don't, th I don't think WoW 2. I mean, um, I mean, I 
Do you actually think they're going to do a WoW 2? I don't, I don't think they're going to do a WoW yeah, 2. I but <laughs> I think I w- it would be, even if they, it was like a quote, WoW 2, it would be drastically, it would be so different that there would be no possible way to even have anything related to this WoW. I, I would love to see Blizzard make a new MMO, to be honest. I, I would love to see... Uh, I would like to see Blizzard make a new fantasy MMO. I know some people are like, oh, they want to see like a sci-fi MMO. <laughs> I, I would like to see another fantasy MMO out of Blizzard. Yeah. Um, something that definitely, uh, you know, takes a lot of lessons from WoW over the years, the successes and the failures and uh, so on and so forth. So I, I would like to see a new MMO out of Blizzard. And it was it was a shame when, uh, when Titan failed, but Titan yeah. turned into Overwatch. Yeah. Um, so you know whatever uh but uh it would be cool it would be cool i i i really i i really when it comes to an mmo as well like you know talking about like old school games something that i really want to see out of a new mmo in the future is um you know prior to wow we had games like everquest and star wars galaxies and i i remember playing star wars galaxies back in the day i played it too yeah, dude, Star Wars Galaxies was just a pure sandbox. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that was actually one reason why it didn't, you know, grow. I mean, it was it was a big MMO for the time, yeah. but it could have gotten bigger uh, if not for the fact that the game there was so much you could do in it. Like you, you had to have somebody like tell you yeah. how to play the game. Like it was so like you, you didn't. <laughs> the game like gave you no <laughs> tutorial; it just dropped you in the world and was like, "Here you go, like have yeah. fun." <laughs> uh, but I mean, you could do things in SWG, like you know, build player cities and like elect a mayor, and then the mayor like taxes everybody in the city, and they can use that money to build more stuff for the city and hire more vendors. And yeah. like, oh my gosh, like the game was like so in depth. Mm-hmm. And I, I would love to see an MMO come out that kind of harkens back to those older MMOs um, that were very successful. They just didn't, they just weren't very approachable. Yeah, um, I think that's what WoW did with EverQuest Ascent. Like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. the same type of thing, but they'd be kind of doing that with uh, just an old format, not really a specific game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they used to... Um, I mean, I've played some MMOs. Like, I played Black Desert Online, which is very sandboxy, but it's not completely sandboxy. Yeah. I, I really, I just really want to play a sandbox uh, MMO, pure sandbox. Um, mm-hmm. No classes, none of that hoo-ha. I mean, you could just you know, giant worlds you can get lost in, you can build, you can change the terrain. I mean, I really, I, I would love, I would love personally to play an MMO where if I play on server A, like the players have turned the world into whatever. And if I get on server B, like the world is completely different. Mm-hmm. Like there's different like towns that people have made. And, uh, you know, I don't know, like just, just a completely different experience. But that would be kind of cool. Um, yeah. if, if I started a, a game company, that's kind of the route I would go with. You know, a true sandbox MMO. But I don't know nothing about, you know, coding. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still yeah. hoping they, they make a Warcraft 4. And oh, I yeah, still... they got to make a Warcraft 4. need to hurry up. Yeah. Like, people are like, well, the RTS genre is dead. And I'm like, well, no. Blizzard like is one of the biggest players in the RTS genre, so they could very easily be one of the innovators of the rts genre and i think it'd be great because for one you could obviously you'd have warcraft 4 so you've already got a a good franchise name behind it that people would be like oh i'd pick that up because i know what it is already then you have the ability to create new lore for world of warcraft like people like well why would you make warcraft 4 if you just have it in wow and it's like well that's simple it's like the same reason people loved Illidan and Arthas at first, because they played it in Warcraft, and then they're like, oh shit, now I get to go play this in World of Warcraft, now that it's out. like It creates yeah. hype around the game, so you're tying these two games together, and it's just a great marketing tool uh, yeah. like, and on top of just a great lore tool. So it's like, alright, you're making new lore. Then, uh, you've got an eSport, because it's an RTS game, it's competitive, you can put it online, multiplayer, be like, hey, the eSport, because it's just an RTS game, it's already competitive, mm-hmm. be like, sweet. Then you can create scenarios like all the old uh, Warcraft 3 scenarios, people just making custom games and stuff. Those are always fun. They've already done a lot of that with StarCraft, but like, I think I like Warcraft scenarios and custom games more than I like StarCraft ones. Okay. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got a new engine for a Heroes of the Storm-esque MOBA type game 
because mm -hmm. you've already got a new Warcraft 4, you got heroes, you got stuff, there's the new MOBA game, BAM! That's already just, there's so many, <laughs> so many itself. positives with it. It sells itself. Yep. I, uh, w one thing, I've never, uh, it's the first time I've heard somebody say to me, like, oh, the RTS genre is dead. I've, I've never actually heard someone say that before, but as I think about it, eh, I'm trying to think what's what's the last big rts that i saw come out other than an expansion pack for starcraft 2 <laughs> yeah like maybe uh, uh there was gray goo that was like I when know. i saw some convention but like it wasn't it didn't get that big like really i think it was just starcraft 2. i want to say like i personally i I mean, I loved Warcraft 3, and I, I love StarCraft 2, but my favorite strategy games were, like, Age of Empires 2 and yeah. Galactic Battlegrounds, Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. I liked those uh, old-fashioned uh, kind of 2D strategy games where you had, like, a population of, like, 250. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like Total War, where you were commanding, like, tens of thousands of units, yeah. but it wasn't like Warcraft 3, where you were only commanding, let's say, two dozen units. It was kind of mm. like something in between, where it's like a, you know, a few hundred units. Uh, yeah. A little easier to manage. Hey, I caught a water snail. That was actually the first <laughs> thing I caught <laughs> since uh, I was yeah. doing this thing. <laughs> um, my fishing increased to two. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I love Age of Empires too. I mean, it's my definitely my, my favorite strategy game. And Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds, which is Age of Empires 2 with a Star Wars skin. I mean, it mm. literally is the exact same game. Well, I pretty much so. even grew up on it. Like Age of Empires was the first PC game I think I ever played, the original one. Oh, and yeah. then Age of Empires 2, Empire Earth. I loved Empire Earth. That was the first multiplayer game I played. So I kind of have like a, a soft spot for RTS games. Because mm. uh, I would play, I'd go on dial up internet and I'd play Empire Earth online. So you just play <coughs> RTS games. But what made, it, like, what made Empire Earth fun was you could either play pre to space, you'd have to evolve through all the. Uh, the ages cause there's like 15 ages and so you could either do that or you could play one age specifically like we're only going to play the middle ages or we're only going to play the industrial age or the modern age or the space age or prehistoric like whatever it was so you had okay. so many different um just thing like it was like games within a game essentially mm -hmm. so it, was, it made it really cool and really replayable and you had communities that would be like, oh, we only play the Middle Ages, or like, we only play the Modern Ages. And so I'd be like, oh, that's really cool. And you could get into those communities and play games with them. And like, you'd learn, like, oh, that guy's like the cavalry archer guy. Like, he's really <laughs> good at making cavalry archers and like that type of yeah. thing. Or like, wow, he's a master sword rusher. Like, you just rush with swordsmen really fast. Like, I don't know. It was just, it was really fun. There was a, um, uh, in Age of Empires 2, it's one of my favorite things about uh, these kind of like older strategy games like Age of Empires 2. I I loved the map uh, Force Deployment, um, or I don't I I remember that's what it was called on Galactic Battlegrounds. On um, Age of Empires 2, not sure, but essentially what it was, it was a map where you started on a tiny island, and in the middle of the map there was a giant island, and so essentially you were going to run out of resources on mm -hmm. the uh, on the small island and you, you'd have to transition to the big one and that's where like all the fighting took place and i remember you know some fond memories of age of empires was like i would build like a fleet of ships and i would literally surround an enemy island <laughs> and prevent them from leaving and they would have no resources or anything and when they would build like little fishing boats like my ships would just blow them up and kill them instantly <laughs> and they would lose all their food and i would occasionally send like little raiding like viking raiding teams onto the island to like just kind of you know like screw some stuff up yeah and uh show them a hard time and eventually once like my proper army was built i would like land them on the island and by that point <laughs> you know if you played age of empires 2 you remember this yeah it, it would just be like all the farms would be exhausted. The villagers would be standing around with nothing to do, no wood to chop, no farms to do. And there'd be like yeah. three guys defending it. And it was just, <laughs> it was like pathetic. It was like attacking a third world country. Like, <laughs> yeah. like everyone's like, like starving to death. Like, and I would just like kill them all and like be like, nice. Yeah, I took it. And that was always so much fun. I also used to like, I, I was kind of like a role player in Age of Empires. Like, I wouldn't attack anybody unless they attacked me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'd have a little trade ship go by an enemy island, and they'd, yeah. like, sh 
blow up my trade ship and I'd be like, oh, you, you, you dastardly fiend. <laughs> like, how could you? And then I'd send like a, a, a single unit like on like on a boat like to their <laughs> island to be like an ambassador. And of course, he'd just get killed instantly. I'm like, oh, they <laughs> yeah. killed the ambassador. But like, it is war then. <laughs> It is war you want, King Reynold. <laughs> so that was always fun, just kind of role playing a little bit. But those are the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I hope there's some RTS game, some RTS game uh, comebacks in the near future. I Definitely. Think that'd be cool. Definitely. I've got um, a, uh, I've got a few ideas for like some games. I mean, if down the road, if I like, if I, if I made like a butt ton of money on youtube to the point where i could just do whatever i wanted and i could just mm -hmm. be like oh, i don't even have to worry about money anymore um there's uh i have a few game ideas i might want to like pursue maybe turning into reality at some point in the future yeah, so be cool. well, yeah and some are strategy related well, yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah. oh. <gasps> someone's talking to me who could it be it's... who could it be <gasps> It's the lady friend. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we should probably uh, <laughs> probably end it then. Yeah, I guess we can uh, we can wrap up. How long have we yeah. been recording for? Uh, Ten we've minutes. We've been going for about fifteen minutes, actually. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's uh, we're almost at an hour and a half. Okay, yeah, that so sounds pretty good. We're pretty good. It's pretty solid. Unless you want to ask me like a like five like quick answers. Or quick answers, quick questions. <laughs> quick answers like, coming or, at you. <laughs> quick answers coming at you. All right, all right, we'll do a lightning round until we yeah, hit. That's uh, what it's called, a lightning round. Yeah, lightning round. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, what oh. is your favorite uh, favorite class in WoW? Mage. Oh, damn, it's not why. a death knight. No. I've played a mage since vanilla WoW. Mages are the best. Mages have the biggest wieners. And so naturally, you know, I play mage. So, mm. yep, mage. Best As class. a main mage at the moment, I definitely agree. <laughs> uh, oh. Really? You, you made a mage? I do a gnome mage. I run. Say, guys, <laughs> what did what did I tell you? A gnome mage, oh, of course. You ever it. <laughs> <laughs> guys, what did I tell you? You know, mages are the best. Come on, your two favorite YouTubers play mages. Wow. Yeah. Wow. As we fish on our non mages. Yeah, well, <laughs> this isn't my main account. This yeah, isn't my this US isn't my account. Main either. Uh, I, I actually have mine's on the EU as well. My uh, my alliance mage. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you played on the EU. All right. But anyway. I also got a uh, my NA mains my Krendor guy, my undead priest. Oh, okay. Uh, so it just depends whatever I want to play. I'm like, I'll play that. Uh, okay. What's your favorite uh, fantasy book? My favorite fantasy book uh, is gonna be. Probably, probably gonna have to go with. Uh, it's a debate. Hold on. All right. Um, they're they're both very special. I I really love the Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. I'm just hmm. debating which do I like more. Um, because Fellowship of the Ring has so much like some incredible poetry in it. I love the poetry in Fellowship of the Ring, mm -hmm. but Two Towers has like freaking rohan in it like freaking rohan and yeah. they also have that amazing oh gosh i cry every time that entire chapter where tree beard is talking about how he lost the ant wives and he sings the song the ant and the ant wife makes me cry every time no oh, like well. those poor trees like not finding their wives you know <laughs> in, the, in the movie they just kind of gloss over it they're just like oh we lost them <laughs> but like in the book it's like he dedicates this whole chapter and they're talking about like Yes, we uh, we loved them so much, and they traveled far away. And when we went to the land where they dwelled, there was nothing but a battlefield and corpses and dead men and orcs. And we've looked for hundreds of years, and we can't find them. And then just like this realization that they're like a people slowly going extinct. And I'm like, oh, just hits me in the feels. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, oh. and he's like, and he sings the song, the end, the end, life, like, come back to me come back to me oh, it's like oh shit uh, um um i love treebeard uh i'm gonna have to go but fellowship of the ring has tom bombadil in it um that's true too tom freaking bombadil i'm gonna i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with fellowship of the ring all right by just like a hair just because of tom fucking bombadil <laughs> if you don't know who tom bombadil is you should be ashamed of yourself tom bombadil is incredible 
not talking to you, the audience. Yeah, that's one of the like. Well, all right, you're not talking to me. Uh, do you know who Tom uh, Bombadil is, Walt Crandor? Oh, uh, I do know Tom Bombadil. I do. Okay, good. I was about to say, oh my gosh, please. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> such a crazy thing. character too. Because I know, like, I love him. He is such little. Like, there's there's no like importance to the story, and yet it's like, <laughs> oh shit, this guy's like, I don't. <laughs> it's like it's so weird. He just like he, Frodo's like, oh yeah, Tom Bombadil. We're or he, he like asks them like, oh my merry friends, like where are you going? And Frodo's like, well, you see, we got this like freaking like ring of darkness right here, like motherfucker, <laughs> like we're taking it like to freaking like Rivendell, like oh my gosh, like this ring, like it's gonna like create like an era of darkness, darkness across the universe we've never seen before. And Tom's like, lol, this thing, he, like takes it, puts it on, and like dances around with it on. He doesn't <laughs> even turn invisible. He's like laughs. And he like starts eating like a water lily, he, like slaps his wife's beauty, and he gives him back the ring. He's like, "Oh, it's just a funny thing." And they're just like, "What? <laughs> Who is this guy?" <laughs> so, dude, all he cared about was collecting water lilies, and just singing to his wife. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, Tom Pompadour. <laughs> and yet, like, he lived near them, and yet they like never knew who he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Bombadil. We've talked about him on my stream a few times. <laughs> you know, like, who is Tom Bombadil or what is he? So it's like a, it's like a BuzzFeed article. Like, who is Tom Bombadil? Eight who crazy facts you've never heard before. <laughs> Number six <laughs> will shock you. <laughs> I need Tom to do that for a, uh, like a fishing with Crendor thing. Like five crazy stories told. Number two is gonna be insane. Number two will shock. I don't think you can fit that title in a YouTube title. Probably not. It'll it's be too big. A, <laughs> be a challenge in itself. Yeah. Just call the video number three will shock you. <laughs> yeah. Just top ten. Or like pointless top ten, number three will shock you. That yeah. might fit. It'll just be like a, a lightning a lightning yeah. boss or something. This <laughs> what? Yeah, it could be like just it could be like that lightning guy in like a uh, storm or uh in uh, what's it called? Uh the uh the Stormheim. Yeah, Stormheim. Yeah, yeah, it's like that dude with the big hammer and the lightning bolts, like strike his <laughs> hammer. It's like watch it's that like, guys, this one this guy shocked me a lot. Yeah. Number three will shock you. <laughs> Number three is this lightning bolt striking this hammer. <laughs> it's literally just a clip of him like zapping you, and I'm like, <laughs> like move on to the next one. There you go. That'll be good. Or or you could do like uh, I I would totally do some shit like this on my channel. I'd be like, oh like top 10 like evil villains in movies number three will shock you and it's like emperor palpatine <laughs> Just do it <laughs> do it do it yes all right. all right next question all right all right let's get uh let's do one more good question here okay um <laughs> if you had if youtube died oh boy and everything around you came crumbling down Okay. Uh, what would you do? Would you still go back to Canada? Would you revert back to that Canadian plan? Um, let's see. If everything crumbled around me, like if YouTube failed and Twitch failed and like everything failed, um, mm -hmm. and I lost my house, um, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, it, it depends if I was like with like a partner at the time. If I was mm. single at the time, then yeah, I'd probably just go like live out in the wilderness. Um, if I was with somebody, uh, I would feel like it would, you know, be my responsibility to kind of pull myself back together and start making money again and so that we can have a life together, you know? Yeah. You know, boring stuff like that. But if I was single, you know, and I just had no one to worry about, yeah, dude, I'll be like, man, well, I had a good run, you know, on YouTube, you know, I ran into a number of people or I got to that point in my life where I could walk down the street and sometimes someone would be like, whoa, are you Nixium? You know, I got to that point in my life. I'm content. I'm going to go live out in the wilderness now and go die out there of dysentery. <laughs> you know, like, what a life. It'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> you know? All right. I got one more question for you. Uh, okay. What is your favorite video that you've ever made my favorite video that i've ever made um mm. my favorite serious video that i've ever made was probably call of the warrior um that or tree of life uh both of because i've made serious videos and comedy videos in my time mm -hmm. 
So call the warrior or tree of life. I think I'm going to lean with call the warrior though, because I think the message was a little bit clear. Um, you know, uh, but in terms of comedy, I'm going to have to go with probably how to mage. Uh, I made a video called how to mage. And I really spoke from the heart <laughs> with that video <laughs> being a mage player all these years. So uh, essentially I just, uh, for those that haven't seen it, go watch it. Uh, how to mage Nixium, look it up. But essentially I just kind of made like a little poke saying like, Oh, mages, they used to be all about, you know, crowd controlling and like they were, you know, a very valuable like member of the group because, you know, mm -hmm. they conjured food and water and all this stuff. And they were so valuable to like a group and now they're just kind of like, eh, just another DPS. <laughs> yeah. So, it's uh, true. yeah, essentially the video is Nixium takes the noob back in time and, you know, the, he sees like, oh, like mages are like the, the, the cream of the crop, you know, like everyone loves mages, like everyone needs a mage. And then they go into mm. like the future and the mages are all like poor and people just make fun of them and <laughs> no one cares about mages anymore. And he's like, oh my God, like what happened? <laughs> and there's a happy little joke in there, which I won't spoil, but yep. But how to mage and call of the warrior. I'll go with those two. All right. Yeah. All right. In fact, I think for, uh, in the description link, instead of putting a link to your channel, I'll just put a link to your How to Mage. Okay, you can do that. I mean, that's essentially linking to your channel, but uh, yeah, yeah, link yeah. to the video, and then people that are lazy don't have to do anything, they just click it. Nixium, you want me to type in something <laughs> on the YouTube search bar? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, don't you know that I have arthritis <laughs> not really but i just don't feel like typing it in Ugh. yeah <laughs> people on the internet they're my favorite back in my day we used to type in what we wanted to do and then we'd be happy with it back in my day we didn't have links we had to wait eight seconds for it to load <laughs> uh, like these milliseconds eight seconds oh my god man i waited like eight minutes <laughs> My goodness gracious. You know how long that porn gif took to load back in the day? It was like I can one pixel. You see the titty. <laughs> it was so, I remember saying that, like, you can almost see the nipple. Like, <laughs> there it is. Whoa. Wow. All right. Well, what else do you want to look at? <laughs> wow, that was amazing. All right, let's go back to watching Madness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Those are the good old days. The good old days. It's, Time's it's funny a how, time like, of discovery. It's funny how, like, our good old days are such different from, like, old people's good old days. Like, back in uh, I was high school football captain, and I oh, used yeah. to have it. And I'm just like, man, remember when I played MU online? That was really uh, fun. Remember when I played uh, this game? That was really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I know exactly what you mean. I. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, oh yeah, like, I was talking on stream the other day, people were like, some some kid was saying that he was just about to go into high school, and uh, he was like, oh, he was like, Nixium, do you have any advice for, like, someone going into high school? And I told him, I was like, oh, make sure you go to your high school prom, because I didn't. <laughs> I, I never went to my prom. I, I shit you not, I stayed at home, and I played World of Warcraft that day. Hey, and, like, you know I, what? I did you, the same thing. Oh, I, I, dude, I, I believe it. Like, high five, you know? But, like, see, looking back on it, I'm kind of like, I should have went just for, like, the awkward memory of, like, yeah, I went to prom by myself. <laughs> you well, know? I didn't care. Dude, I had to raid that night. Yeah. Okay? That's true. You can't like, pass there, up the raid. You're being see, there's counted this, on. There's this thing in life, guys, called priorities, and you have to have your priorities in order. You know? Go kill. Responsibility. Yeah. Res dude, responsibility, man. Go kill Kel'Thuzad in Axe Ramos 25, man. Or go to your high school prom, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Obviously, you're going to go kill Kel'Thuzad. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. No, we were talking about that. And I was like, man, I didn't have time for no prom. I had to go play WoW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the good old days. So, I miss school. I miss I, school. I, don't know. I miss the freedom of just kind of... Like, not having to worry about stuff. Yeah. But, not having uh, to pay bills. Yeah. But it's also okay. nice kind of doing it as well. So I don't know. It's hey, kind of a nice. give or take type of situation. The traveling and stuff is always cool. You know, I like going yeah. around the world. But, yeah, I like to not having to pay bills. And, you know, I, I like to looking forward to pizza night every Friday. You know, <laughs> yeah. Mom's homemade pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
It's great. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, we can end it All on right. mom's homemade pizza. All right, we'll, we'll end it on mom's homemade pizza. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so again, give your promote yourself. All right, my name my name is Nixium. You can find me on YouTube and Twitch and, uh, yep, under Nixium. You should totally go watch my stuff. I make WoW videos. I'm kind of expanding a little bit, making some videos in other games too. Uh, having fun with that. Leave feedback. Uh, come watch me on Twitch. I talk about BDSM. It's great. <laughs> and um, not even kidding. And uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll have a great time laughing at all my silly voices. So uh -huh. thank you for having me on again, Mr. Crendy. Yeah, thanks for coming on and just ranching about whatever with me. Oh, yeah. For an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's just something that I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So me and Moo Cluck both do. So we also do uh we do uh What? I don't know if you know who Dark Side Phil is, but Oh yeah, I've heard of Dark Side Phil. God bless Dark Side Phil and his <laughs> What? Like, what? Like, I just love how he says what. He sounds hilarious. What? 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 I'm pressing buttons. <laughs> God damn. All right. All right, let's end this before we go off on another tangent about <laughs> something else. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks for doing whatever you're doing. Go watch oh, yeah. his videos. Go watch my videos. Watch both our videos. Put them up on two monitors. Put them up on three monitors. Do whatever you want. We need money. Please help us. See you later. Yeah. See you. B bye. Yeah. <laughs>